Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. In today's video, I'm starting another exciting reading vlog. I am doing a book swap with Ashley from Bookish Realm where we pick each other's TBR. <music> So a couple of months ago, you might have seen that I did this with my friend Mara from Books Like Whoa. I had some requests to do this with Ashley and we are friends and have some similar taste. So I reached out to her and she was up for it. So I'm super excited. We've been planning for this for a couple months and it got delayed a couple of times. But today is December 8th and I just picked up my packages that she sent me in the mail. Because it's close to the holidays and shipping times are taking forever, we decided to use Amazon to send to each other just so that we could get these videos going. So here are the two packages that arrived from Ashley. We each selected four books that we wanted to see the other person read for this TBR and we didn't really put any parameters on it. Both of us added all of our physical TBR books to our Goodreads shelves so we didn't purchase something the other person already had. I've, I've probably ordered a couple things since <laughs> I probably shouldn't have, but I've ordered a couple of things since she mailed these, so hopefully it's none of the books that she sent. But uh, regardless, I am very excited to see what she sent me. So we're going to go ahead and unbox these and see what I'm going to be reading in December. All right, we'll start with the small package. Okay, and I want to see if there's like a gift receipt or anything. Oh, there is. Okay, so I'm going to read the gift receipt. Oh, no. Nope. Okay, here we go. She says, this was a hard-hitting romance for me. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so hard-hitting romance. Let's see what it is. Oh, interesting. I don't know anything about this. Okay, so this is Cherishing the Goddess by Lucy Eden. It looks like it's a indie published romance. Billionaire CEO Alexander Wolf has spent years putting in 120 hour weeks in the office and adding zeros to his net worth. But lately work has left him feeling burnt out and uninspired. Then he's given the chance to go head to head with a legendary corporate raider and the man he'd idolized his entire career. He seizes the opportunity, immediately jumping on a plane for Barbados to close the deal in person. If he's successful, it'll be the biggest win of his career. He had no way of knowing that meeting a mesmerizing beauty would have the power to derail everything. Interesting, interesting. So there's like family secrets and yeah, hard hitting romance. Awesome. I'm here for it. I have never heard of this before. It definitely was not on my radar. Um, excited to see what I think. We have the other package. This one should have three books in it. So um, before I look at any of them, I'll try to see if I can get the gift receipt. Okay. There, there's like a bunch. All right. Okay. So the first one says, I really like some of the commentary that was made in this one. Plus, I wanted you to read two romances. <laughs> okay, so we've got another romance coming. And then this one says, okay, so we were literally just talking about tough books. And I know this one is tough, but I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts. Okay, so we have a romance with interesting commentary, a hard-hitting book, and let me reach inside and see if, let me see if there's like one more that I missed. Oh, there it is. Ha, okay. I originally had something else planned, but then last night I heard you hadn't read this one, so I had to get it for you. Okay. Okay, I'm really curious, so let's see. <laughs> let's see what she got me. Um, oh, cool. This... I have not read this one. Um, the Right Swipe by Alicia Rye, and I have been wanting to read, sorry, like my kids are banging on the wall, but um, I have been wanting to read Alicia Rye. I've never read anything by her, and this one was definitely on my radar. I've heard some good things about it. So this one has a heroine who's revolutionized romance in the digital world. She works in like technology, and she's a, on a dating app and her newest match is a former pro football player. Sounds interesting, cool, I'm down. That should be fun. Okay, let's see what else we got. Oh, this must be the one that she didn't know I hadn't read. I'm guessing, because I did talk about this in a live stream. Cool, oh, I'm excited. This is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia 
hand, um, every Scrooge deserves a second chance. So I think this is kind of a YA reimagining of a Christmas Carol. So that's exciting. On Christmas Eve five years ago, Holly was visited by three ghosts who showed her how selfish and spoiled she'd become. They tried to convince her to mend her ways. She didn't. And then she died. What? <laughs> now she's stuck working for the top secret company Project Scrooge as the latest ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> Okay, that sounds very, very interesting. All right, and then I'm guessing the last book is the hard-hitting one. So, ooh, okay. Yeah, thanks, Ash. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know I have heard this one is super hard-hitting. I, I, like, if it wasn't for this, I probably wouldn't have picked this one up, but I have heard it's good. So Heroin by Mindy McGinnis, which is about heroin the drug I think it's a YA book but I've heard it's pretty dark and yeah it's about a girl who gets in a car accident and has to take pain medication but then gets addicted to them and like goes into this dark spiral of spiral of drug addiction okay okay it, it you know I will <laughs> like, I probably would like I definitely this is another one I definitely would not have picked up on my own so, so I think this is actually a pretty great selection. Two romances, which should be fun, even if one of them is hard hitting. And uh, Afterlife of Holly Chase is perfect heading into Christmas. So I think that'll be fun. And Heroin obviously is going to be the, the gut wrencher. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so there you go. Those are the four books that Ashley sent for me to read. Thank you, Ashley. Oh boy, heroin. I'm gonna have to like get ready for this. Okay, it's gonna be great. Um, once I get started on the first one and I have some things to update you with, I will check back in and let you know how it's going. So I was able to get a copy from my library of the right swipe on audio, so I'm listening to that right now. So far, I'm really into it. Um, cooking some onions to make chicken soup. Looking good. This will be ready just in time for dinner. Let it cook down a little bit more. Um, and I'll do a quick book update. Hey guys, so honestly, I'm also just like super exhausted. I have been doing so many live streams for the last week and a half and I'm just like probably ready for a break, but um, this audiobook is really interesting. It Parts of it are really entertaining. It's one of these ones where I suspect when I go to look at reviews, some people aren't gonna like the heroine. Doesn't wanna be in touch with her feelings and emotions and is more of like an alpha heroine, which I really enjoy. She's the CEO of this dating app company. And the hero is a guy that she thought had ghosted her, although they were extenuating like family emergency reasons for it. And now they're kind of thrown together. And it's a lot of fun. I am super enjoying it. I also think thematically it's tackling some really interesting issues in terms of women in tech fields and the way that misogyny often becomes a problem, women of color specifically in those fields. Also the hero who is a former football player is allowing for some discussion of, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it right now, but the, the thing related to repeated traumatic brain injury and in football players and the cover-ups with that. So there's a lot of like interesting stuff going on. I'm enjoying the story. Yeah, it's good. So I'm listening. I've been listening to that on audio, and so far so good. I hope it shows up on camera. But it's snowing. It's the first time this year. Are you excited about the snow? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, so it is the next day, it's December 10th, and I have just finished The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. Um, I honestly flew through this and I really enjoyed it. I would definitely read more from her and more in this series in particular. I, <laughs> it's one of these ones, which maybe I said this earlier, but I have a feeling that probably some of the people who don't like this don't like the heroine because she's you know, she's an unlikable female character, I guess, right? She's a strong woman, a strong, smart woman. She's been hurt in the past. She has trust issues. And the hero is this just total cinnamon roll. <laughs> he used to be a professional football player, a linebacker. And I really loved this. I loved their relationship and the development of it. And I also really liked the thematic things that were being dealt with. It's dealing with misogyny in the tech field. It's dealing with sexual harassment and the bravery that it takes to come out and speak about it. It's also dealing with, like I said, this thing of traumatic brain injury in, among football players. And so I feel like there's a lot of rich 
topics and content that are getting explored here and done pretty well. I think it's a strong romance. There's definitely a little bit more of the like miscommunication stuff, but I, I do feel like it's warranted given the pasts of the characters. So I really liked this. I'm, I'm kind of in between like a four and a half and five, but like I'm gonna rate this pretty high. And I'm so pleased that Ashley finally got me to read Alicia Rag as I've been meaning to for a long time. So I finally have. Yay! I read The White Right's Wife. And I'm a fan. I really liked it. I had heard mixed things about it and I can totally see why, like I said. But um, yeah, I thought this was very good. Next, also readily available as an audiobook from my library is Heroin by Mindy McGinnis. And honestly, I'm kind of glad because I feel like with the heaviness of the content as a book about opioid use and drug addiction, this is going to be a rough one. And so I think having the audiobook to help me get through it is probably going to be a good call. So I'm going to start this today. And then I did look because <laughs> I was like, well, let's just see like what's available. Perhaps unsurprisingly, there's like a wait list for the afterlife of Holly Chase, which makes sense because like it's about to be Christmas. So everybody's probably listening to holiday stuff. Um, so I'll be reading that physically and I'll be reading this one physically. Before I dive into those, I do have a couple of other physical books I need to finish, one of which is also for another secret video thing. Um, so I'm doing a lot of those this month, I guess. It's going to be a weird mid-month wrap up because I'm going to be like, here's like a bunch of books <laughs> that I've read that I can't tell you about yet. Um, anyway, so I will touch base when I have something to update you on. <sighs> okay, so I've started listening to Heroin. The main character gets into a really bad car accident at the beginning. She's a softball player in high school and has a severe leg injury and is going to have to go through surgery and lots of physical therapy to get better. I'm going to put this down. So one thing you guys might not know is years ago when my oldest kid was less than a year old, I had a very severe leg and ankle injury where I had to have surgery and went through like months of recovery and physical therapy before I could like walk again or put any weight on it and got like screws in my ankle. And so listening to her go through what she's going through is like very reminiscent <laughs> of what I went through, except she's younger and it's affecting her sports career. And, um, yeah, so like it's an it's for sure intense. One thing that I will say that's interesting is they have a thing where they're giving her a button to push for drugs when needed. And I know for me, they were pretty careful about limiting it. So I think with the opioid issue, especially with young people, a lot of states now are very cautious, whether it's teenagers or adults with managing how many you get and like they were pretty cautious about stuff with me which is interesting uh, however I think that has come because there were so many issues with addiction after this kind of injury and it may be that not every state is even doing this or every hospital is as cautious with this as they should be so I'm interested to see how it goes kind of like getting into this process but for sure the trauma of going through something like that is like super relatable and like bringing me back to what that was like even though it was now you know like uh six years ago that this happened but it's it's a lot so anyway just thought I would do a quick update it's it's, it's definitely an intense one but I'm interested hey guys so I am about halfway through heroin and oh man it's making me feel very sad <laughs> Like, it's so intense. It's just, like, the level of escalation is so wild and quick of seeing how quickly she starts doing things like lying and stealing and, like, having more problems with her relationships with people she cares about and justifying why she's continuing to take these pills. And, like, it's... Oh, man, it's a lot. It's really intense. The reality is, is, like, it's... you. It humanizes it. Right, you can see why, especially when she's feeling like, you know, her potential future as a softball player, because that's what she wants to do, is on the line because of her injury. She wants to push herself as hard as she can, and just how quickly she kind of spirals into this thing. It's wild. I mean, cause I think the thing is too, is the reality is getting injured in that way and the recovery process is painful. It is definitely painful. And I think you know, for me, I had a kid and that 
you know, affected some of my choices in terms of what I was doing and which medications I was taking and stuff. And so this wasn't like an issue I had personally. The addiction thing was never an issue for me, but you know, she talks about the pain and the pain of physical therapy. And it is, especially at the beginning, it's very painful. It's really hard. And, um, you know, I, I can imagine like yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult and you can see why she ends up where she does, but it's also just so tragic and so heartbreaking and how few people are paying close enough attention to realize what's happening. They're now starting to, there's now some suspicion, but I think things are going to get worse before they get better. So, <sighs> Ashley, <laughs> I mean, it's a very good book. It's, it's a very good book. It's just, it's a lot. So anyway. All right, I'll check in with you guys more later. Hey guys, so I finished Heroin by Mindy McGinnis. Um, wow, it is intense. It's a lot. It's really, really good. <laughs> I'm going to give it five stars, but it is super intense. And I'm glad there's a content warning at the beginning of it for people who've dealt with drug abuse because there's a lot of pretty graphic on the page depictions of use and abuse of drugs and... Uh, like it gets pretty intense so definitely check content warnings on this if you need them but who yeah like this is definitely one that i probably never would have picked up if uh ashley hadn't sent it to me but i'm not upset about it like it is a very good book and you know good to think about these things uh because they're real issues that come up periodically and the ending is really good let's say hi yeah. hi hi um but yeah five stars so it's an intense one. I'm glad I was able to listen to it on audio. I think that helped me get through it with the content. But two down, two to go. We're doing pretty good. Bye. And mommy, I had a Hello everybody, it is December 13th. I am here with an update. I have been reading Cherishing the Goddess by Lucy Eden today. This is where I'm at, so I'm gonna do the update. Also, I thought I would throw up a picture because it was really cool. My friend Isabella from the Feminist Bookworm kindly invited me to join a hangout with Christina Lauren, the authors, which was super cool. So I'll post a picture and that was really great, um, which is fine because I read it at holidays by them. Anyway, Okay, so I am reading Cherishing the Goddess, and it's great. I'm really liking it. This is an indie published romance set in Barbados. It follows a man who's like a billionaire CEO who wants to buy this fancy resort, and the heroine is the daughter of the man who owns it, and um, they don't realize who the other person is. It's like a really nice, steamy romance, but it's got some like undercurrents that are interesting thematically. So his daughter is biracial and it's interesting because in the chapter I was just reading she was talking to him about why she hasn't had a lot of relationships. She's like 24 and he's in his 30s so there's like a little bit of an age gap but um, part of it is she talks about the fact that there are people who see her as something exotic and some like creepy things that came out of that and so I like that it's dealing with racism and colorism and the exoticization of women of color. There's like definitely some stuff that's getting talked about. There was a quote that I loved where because she has gray eyes. I'll, I'll read you this quote. Hold on let me find it. So she has gray eyes right um which has been commented on. She says I dated a guy for a couple of weeks who was obsessed with my eyes. They were all he could talk about. Finally one day I'd had enough and drew him a Punnett square and explained that my mother can trace our ancestry through both the Irish indentured servants and the African enslaved people of Barbados. I suddenly became less interesting when my exotic appearance is less magical and more due to secondary school science combined with a history of human cruelty. Anyway, I just like thought that was a striking quote. And um, yeah, so far I am really liking this. I've not read anything from Lucy Eden before, but I'm definitely getting through this pretty quickly. I also realized when I entered this video, I think I just assumed everybody should know who Ashley is. But for any of you who are watching who don't already know who she is, 
you really should go follow her. She is amazing. She's a booktuber. She's a mom of a really cute little girl and she is a youth librarian and just has amazing content, insightful things to say, reads a variety of things, and she's just really great. Normally I would have put that in the intro, but I was like, oh yeah, I didn't really do that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna keep reading this. Maybe I'll finish it tonight. We'll see. And then I would just have one book left, which is pretty great. Good morning. So last night I finished reading Cherishing the Goddess. Um, I was just like so tired. <laughs> I didn't want to get on and talk to you about it last night, but I really liked this. I feel like Ashley has chosen great books, like really, really good books. I mean, you know, I'm not surprised. I feel like we have fairly similar taste in books a lot of the time and she, you know, has good taste in stuff. So um, what to say about this? So here's the thing. If you don't want any spoilers, um, you might not want to listen to my discussion of this because I'm going to talk a little bit about some spoilery themes that get addressed here. And I think the fact that this is a more hard-hitting romance in some ways is part of why Ashley sent it to me. And I really liked it. I liked the way it was handling things. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, maybe skip to the next clip. Okay, so if you're still here, you don't mind spoilers. Here is the thing. Um, the big secret that the heroine here is keeping that ends up getting revealed is her mother has Alzheimer's, early onset Alzheimer's. And so this is a book that is about love, about memory, um, and about, you know, like, losing what it what it is to lose a parent in that way where they're sometimes themselves and some days they're not. Uh, and, you know, it's really sad. I loved the development of the romance. I think the romance between the two of them is really, really good. And the focus on family and on cu culture, there's a lot about Barbados and the author talks about that, like, some of the places and restaurants and things discussed here are actually real places in Barbados, which I think is super cool. Yeah, I just thought this was really good. There's a lot going on here. It's really rich. It's a good, like, steamy and sweet romance that's a little bit of kind of a slow burn, but I was really a fan. I'm gonna give this one four and a half stars, so... Great job, Ashley. Just know that it does deal with those issues if you decide to pick this up. Which means the last book I have to read is The Afterlife of Holly Chase. So I have to decide because I've got another reading vlog that I need to start. And like, do I want to just finish this one and be able to edit it even if I'm doing it earlier than Ashley's and before you guys see it? Or do I wait and read this one later? I don't know. So I will check back in once I start the afterlife of Holly Chase. And then when I'm done, we'll do a little roundup and discussion of the books that Ashley picked for me. Hello there. So it is December 22nd. It's been a little while. I had to read Malice by John Gwynn for another reading vlog, which you haven't seen that yet. I'll link it up above. But I'm about to start The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand, which is the very final book for this reading project. And honestly, I'm kind of happy I left this as my last book right before Christmas because it's a YA retelling of The Christmas Carol, so that seems perfect to be reading going into Christmas in just a couple of days. So I'm going to start this tonight, and I'm hoping it'll be a relatively quick read. It's a YA book. It's less than 400 pages long, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. I've heard good things about it, so we're going to get into this. Hello, everybody. So I was filming some videos this morning. Last night, I did a little bit of reading of The Afterlife of Holly Chase. This is where I'm at. So far, I'm really enjoying it. It's super interesting. It's a reimagining of The Christmas Carol um, where there's multiple Scrooges <laughs> over time and Holly Chase is kind of a Scrooge. She's visited by the three spirits, but she doesn't change. And so her second chance is that she has to be one of the ghost of Christmas past to try to help change other people. So the premise is really interesting. It's a contemporary, so she's just like really selfish and stuck up and privileged. It's fun. I'm enjoying it. Like good timing right before Christmas. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve, so I will probably read a little bit more of this throughout the day and let you guys know what I think. Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, so I'll put in a couple of clips here. We had a really good Christmas morning. Daddy, look! <laughs> like, dump it all out. No suspense. <laughs> it's about 11 o'clock. 
and I'm finally getting myself together. The kids are occupied with crafts. Um, I've been doing some more reading of The Afterlife of Holly Chase and I'm enjoying it. This is where I'm at. I'm like 100 pages or so in, so I might read a little more today. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting take on The Christmas Carol and it's fun. So yeah, not like a lot of deep things to say about it, but enjoyable. I guess that's it. I will check in with you guys later. 1813. Dearest reader, the time has come to place our bets for the upcoming social season. Hello everybody. It is the day after Christmas and, uh, you know, as always, things were busier than I anticipated. Did I make more progress on this yesterday? No, I didn't. But we did watch the first two episodes of Bridgerton, which was very fun and exciting. So I'm going to try to read a little bit of this now. I'm going to be going on a live show on my friend the Naughty Librarian's channel for a book club she hosts with her and Liana's library in... I probably need to get on there in like 35 minutes. So I'm going to do a little reading eat some lunch, and um, hopefully can like make some good progress on this today. All right, it's like nine o'clock. I finished the book. Yay. Um, I kind of flew through it once I got reading it, and I really liked it. I don't know why, but I didn't really expect the ending to go where it went, although it makes sense, and now I feel dumb because I'm like, I should have seen the ending coming. But uh, yeah, this was this was great. This is like a really charming modern retelling for teenagers of The Christmas Carol. And I don't want to say too much about it because spoilers, but it it was really really good. I would say 4 stars. So, yeah. Great. Good pick. I will be back tomorrow to do a quick wrap-up clip, but overall, my first thoughts are Ashley picked really good books and I'm pretty pleased with how this went. I'm super curious to see how she did with the things I picked for her. Hello everybody, I'm here to do a quick little wrap-up clip for the vlog. I finished all four of the books that Ashley sent to me and I have to say overall this was a really positive experience and I'm not super surprised because I think Ashley and I have a lot of overlap in our taste. I do think this was a really great mix of books to pick for me as well. I liked the variety and I, I enjoyed all of them. Um, I didn't have anything less than four stars, so yay, I guess. Like, Really curious to see how she does with what I sent to her. This was a fun project. Maybe surprisingly, the highest rated of these books was Heroin by Mindy McGinnis. I gave this one five stars. It was difficult to get through, but also very good. Then two of the books I'm giving four and a half stars. So The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. I really liked this one a lot, more than I would think I was even expecting to. And it makes me want to read more in the series from her. I also gave four and a half stars to Cherishing the Goddess by Lucy Eden. I really enjoyed this. I would read more from Lucy Eden in the future. And so I'm kind of glad that Ashley introduced me to a new indie romance author to check out. I know she has been doing much more of a dive into indie romance this year and um, I have a few that I read but not nearly as much. And then I'm giving four stars to The Afterlife of Holly Chase. I really really enjoyed it. Not as much a favorite as the others but I think it's a really good example of what it is. So yeah. Overall I would say this was definitely a success. Thank you Ashley for picking out some great books for me to read. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog and uh, definitely head over and check out her video if you haven't done that yet. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, tell me about a book that you read on the recommendation of a friend and ended up really enjoying. Tell me about a time that that happened. It's always nice when you have friends who can recommend good books for you. Talk to me about that in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon linked down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.